Hello everyone, we are group 13. I'm Cindy and with my colleagues Anita, Richard, Seth, uh, Soin and Fabian. Today we are going to introduce our Type B project. Our project is to investigate and comment on existing plot ratios, restrictions and redevelopment potentials for some typical old buildings groups in Hong Kong and discuss their po uh, potential fate. We have chosen the following three areas. There are two moon, Yamate and Topawan respect respectively. Our first case is located in Topawan, 99 to 170 Mason Road, and I'm going to introduce some background information first. There are four buildings in the area that we have chosen, which were built in 1961 uh, to 62. The total site area is around 1,657 square meter with 54 units provided. The total current estimated GFA is around 4,600 square meter. Providing more background about the building group. The buildings are kind of unique because they were built under the Simple Servants Cooperative Building Society scheme, which was a welfare for the simple servants at that time. So usually the residents here are working for the government while people from the same or related department group together. One special thing is that they formed an, um, they formed their own society and bought the corresponding land. After that, they would design and construct their own building. The scheme was abolished in the mid of 1980s. So there are no more new buildings now. For the transportation, there is no railway in Tokawan before. So the road transportation was well developed. But last year with the opening of Juma Line, there is the Tokawan station, which made this area more convenient to see whether this area has the redevelopment potential. We first analyze the current situation. From the information captured in the government's website, we then calculate and compare the GFA and plot ratio. You can see in the Excel sheet, neither of these two elements obtain the maximum value, which means the land is not being fully utilized and still contains rooms for further redevelopment. For the redevelopment analysis, we assume that all three listed elements are used in their mass value and the rebuilt building's height per story would be 2.8 meters. With around 33% site coverage, the estimated number of rebuilt story would be 22, which a lot more than the current sixth story. Next, for calculating the difference in the number of flats, as the current design is not applicable, so we assume redeveloping into small flats with one or two bedrooms per unit, which are more suitable for the current property demand. We can see the number of flats increase to 66 to 88 units per building. It's pretty clear that the number of story and flats increase, which will lead to a better land use and transfer the unit into the appropriate area and type. Next, my colleague Fabian will introduce the potentials and drawbacks of this redevelopment. Thank you, Cindy. Now moving on to the redevelopment potentials and drawbacks. Uh, Tokoman actually epitomizes many of Hong Kong's housing issues. For one, the area is highly, uh, has a very high population density. So the implications of this not only affects the residents in the buildings, right? Where would they go temporarily, but also you know, neighboring stakeholders, neighboring buildings and business entities that operate within the vicinity of the redevelopment site. So actually keep in note that many buildings actually have uh, you know, subdivided units, which makes things much more congested and crowded. So speaking of crowded in areas, uh, casual parking is actually quite common in the neighborhood as Mainstone Road has a very low vehicle flow which makes it ideal to park. But important, more importantly, there is a high presence of maintenance garages that just attracts much more drivers to park by for retail services. Uh, so this all in all just you know, affects the daily operations of such a dense uh, area. But fortunately, uh, there is MTR nearby to kind of accommodate the density population. Uh, the construction actually commenced a few years ago. However, to our attention, there were some inspections that have showed that uh, buildings have suffered from ground subsidence, uh, including you know, underground and overground uh, pipes have also uh, sunk. So this happened a few years ago, but this is a potential caveat to look out for. All of these ties on top of a hefty acquisition cost. The current average price per GFA is about 13,250. Moreover, we should account for the social impact as about 39% you know, of surveyed residents are still are only employed, whilst the rest are unemployed, including you know, 439 uh, retired residents. 
For this reason, the buyout has to be somewhat appealing as there is a negative impact around the negative sentiment around the economic impact. So uh, there should be some form of scheme to be implemented to accommodate those who are facing adverse difficulties. Now to cushion the costs, uh, you know, the closest retail complexes are over 200 meters away from the site. And being a densely populated area, uh, this in turn can attract investors and partners to build more retail facilities to support residents' shopping needs. Although we are analyzing four buildings due to time constraints, there are actually eight or more neighboring buildings. So there's an opportunity to build a much more centralized property that consists of parking spaces, facilities, our residentials, and sky bridges to really alleviate the traffic congestion. Now, derived from our analysis, we can conclude that the land is not fully utilized to its limits and there is room for development. It has the potential to build a stronger infrastructure and the widespread of facilities to accommodate the densely populated area. The overall redevelopment potential is quite plausible as it draws in 286 units compared to what was previously 54. So that's almost a 5.3x. However, some you know, we should account for you know, the social impact as well as the safety of you know, the ground sentiment um, for our re redevelopment. I'd now like to pass the time on to Richard and Zach to talk about the Yamate site. Thank you, Fabian. This is Richard and my partner Zach and I will introduce the background and redevelopment of Yamate Food Market. Let us start with some profiles of the area. Yamate Food Market was built in 1913. Initially, there were only 40 shops in the market. As the economy grows, the number of shops reaches a peak at 300 in the 90s. However, due to numerous factors, the number has shrunk. There are about 200 to 300 shops with 48,000 related labor right now. The area is approximately 14,000 square meters and the GFA is estimated at 21,000 square meters. The picture on the left shows the view of the food market while the image on the right shows the location. As you can see, the food market is surrounded by three different roads, so it belongs to the Class C site. Let me introduce some interesting facts about Yamate Food Market. The food market is a historically valuable site and is classified as a grade two historic building. The buildings in the market are all one or two story tall only, and all of them were built with brick and stone. To arrive at the market, you can take both NTR and buses. Now we we'll move on to the power ratio analysis. As mentioned before, the area is 14,000 square meters and the estimated DFA is 21,000 square meters. Therefore, the plot ratio is 1.5. According to the restriction, a plot ratio for the commercial site at Yamate should not exceed 9. So the maximum DFA will be 126,000 square, square meters. What we can see from the analysis is that there are still spaces for redevelopment. And now I will pass my time to Zach to further discuss the redevelopment plan. Thank you, Richard. Um, now I'm going to talk about the redevelopment potentials and drawback of the Yomate fruit, fruit market. The first issue of the fruit market is that it is that the roads are too narrow and many vehicles have to stop to discharge the cargoes. This has caused the traffic around the fruit market to be extremely chaotic, especially during peak hours. Redevelopment opportunities come into place. We can expand the roads and even create open space for people to use. The second issue of the market is the hygiene and noise issues around the area. Since the market was established in 1913, many facilities are old and unclean. Also, most vendors are really close to each other and lots of customers come during peak hours. The population density will then increase dramatically, causing hygiene and noise issues around the area. Next, I'm going to talk about the opportunity of redevelopment. First, we can relocate the wholesale operation to a new multi-story building and leave the market space just for fruit retailers. This way, both sides will have enough space to operate and we can also disperse the people into two different places to alleviate all the problems. 
The second opportunity will be that the fruit market can be revitalized into a tourist attraction by renewing some facilities and improving the hygiene issues. Lastly, the renewed fruit market will be complemented with a new boutique hotel, open space, art and culture uses to the south of the market. We believe this would make the area not so crowded. Moreover, all these features, with all these features, we believe tourists will be more interested in coming to the fruit market. The fruit market will also help the shops around the area to gradually rise. In conclusion, we talk about the plot ratio analysis and the potentials and drawbacks of the redevelopment. We emphasize that the fruit market has some plot ratio left for uh, redevelopment and we should not destroy the original building. Next, we talk about the two drawbacks of development, uh, traffic problems, environmental hygiene issues, and noise issues. On the other hand, we focus on the potential such as wholesale operations relocated to multi-story buildings with top site commercial development, tourist attraction note with fruit retailing and other tourism related uses and new boutique hotel open space and culture uses. So next, I'm going to pass it to my team Wei, to talk about the Pierhead Garden. Thank you, Zach. Our last case is Pierhead Garden in Tournament area. So first, let me provide some background information. Pierhead Garden is the first residential property project above the station of the light rail, and also the first real world superstructure project with beneficial ownership of the KCRC. It's built in 1988, co-developing by New World Development and MTR, providing a total of 1,440 units. The site area in GFA is approximately to be 17,000 square meters and 158,400 square meters respectively. For the facility, Pierhead Garden offers swimming pool, tennis court, children playground, and parking lot for its residents. There's also a mall, Ocean Walk, located right under Pierhead Garden, providing convenient shopping experience for residents and citizens around. There's, there are three main types of tra transportation around, light rail station, ferry, and bus. We conclude that the facilities and transportation provide sufficient support for residents' daily needs. With the background information, we want to further analyze the redevelopment potential of Pierhead Garden. We first assume height of each story is 2.5 meter, since each tower has 20, 32 stories. So we got the current estimated height of 80 meters. Under the current height limitation, the building height remaining quota is five meter per hour per tower. With the remaining high quota, we calculated the possible extra flats to build after redevelopment, which will be 16 flats each tower and 96 flats in total. Assume that one household consists of four people, redevelopment can possibly provide living space for additional 384 citizens. As the number is quite small, we're skeptical, skeptical about the redevelopment potential under this analysis. So other types of analysis will be conducted for further investigation. We have conducted the plot ratio analysis by estimating floor area and site area using the scale of a Hong Kong centimeter for this class A building. The current plot ratio was 9.290, which was higher than the maximum domestic plot ratio set by the Hong Kong government. The main drawback of the redevelopment will be the high acquisition cost, as the average price per GFA in April 2022 was around 8,800 Hong Kong dollars. With our estimated GFA, the redeveloper has to pay at least 19.2 million Hong Kong dollars for acquisition. However, there is still opportunity for redevelopment. According to the Railway Development Strategy, the government planned to set up a new Chamun South MTR station. The construction is expected to start next year and estimated to be completed in 2030. This new station can potentially bring more businesses here and attract more people to move in. As a result, it's foreseeable that the property price around this area will increase. Overall, 
we can conclude that there is a lack of redevelopment potentials for the Pierhead Garden, considering the current plot ratio restrictions, which is already exceeding the maximum domestic plot ratio, and high acquisition cost, which may lead to less or negative profit margin. However, we can predict the possible fate of this building positively as there is still opportunities for redevelopment. For example, creation of extra spaces within the building is still possible with the building height remaining quota, and the establishment of the MTR station will make transportation easier, which will lead to the relaxation of plot ratio restrictions. Thank you very much.